Today I'm filming again a fragrance related video. Recently I've been testing a whole bunch of perfumes from a very interesting French brand Floraiku and I have to say I'm really in love with this brand with its fragrances. My overall impression from this house it's beautiful, it's touching even, very poetic. Floraiku fragrances mostly feel light, airy to me, very delicate. It's exactly what I like and prefer for everyday use. I can't say that they are minimalistic, but they're definitely not overlouded with notes and accords. It's very natural, polite scents, but with certain emotions. I have here 15 samples and one full-sized bottle. So quite a lot of fragrances, a lot of different stories to talk about. A few things about the brand. Floraiku is a French brand a sister brand of Memo Paris, but with a different concept. The house draws their inspiration from Asian culture, especially Japanese, and their fragrances are inspired by Asian ceremonies. When I talk about perfumes, I like to give them a grade, a rating, and I also love when other people on YouTube do the same, because it really shows how much person like one particular scent. Let's say perfumes from 1 to 5 I would never wear, but I appreciate their idea uniqueness, 5 to 8 I would wear occasionally and 8 plus are the ones I really love. Okay, the first collection we are going to experience is called Enigmatic Flowers and the collection is inspired by Ikebana ceremony, the Japanese art of flower arrangement. Let's begin with a fragrance called First Dream of the Year. I instantly felt in love with this orange blossom. Here we have a um, contemporary, clean, very balanced orange blossom, not soapy, a bit candy-like even. Like an orange blossom lollipop, sort of. Beside orange blossom, the main notes here are grapefruit, iris, also orange, petty grain, jasmine absolute, amber accord and musk. For me it feels more citrusy than floral, but very natural, with very delicate green touches. It's not loud, it's very pleasant, all year round, unisex perfume. It's like, a, um, it's like an orange blossom soda or sorbet. There is some crispiness, sparkle even, in here. It's fresh and cool, but at the same time very sunny. I can imagine those little orange flowers, jasmine flowers. It lasts long enough, 5-6 hours for sure. And I think that children may love this fragrance because it smells like it smells like mom. It smells kind, gentle, naturally sweet without anything artificial in it. As for the rating, I would give it 8.5 on 10 because it's a lovely scent. Really, really like this one. Next fragrance from the floral collection is called I See Clouds Go By. Oh, this fragrance. It has such a strange, nostalgic effect on me. Like, it reminds me something from my young years. I cannot recall what exactly it reminds me. Maybe just um, a collective image of my youth late spring, summer, maybe summer vacation, warm weather, fresh berries in the garden. It reminds me of some soaps that my mom used to buy. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Makes me so lost in my good memories. Speaking about the fragrance itself, I see it as a slightly soapy, juicy berry scent, full of green leaves. Not too sweet, but a bit tart from cassis. The notes in the fragrance are Cassis, Blackcurrant, White Musk, Cherry Blossom, and other notes are Bergamot, Petit Grain, Davana, and Cedarwood. What I noticed is that on humid, rainy days, the musky side of the fragrance become very prominent and it brings the fragrance into a more soapy direction. Imagine a cherry soap bar. But on the dry, warm days, I catch more floral aspects of this fragrance. I got those really fluffy petals of cherry blossom and I'm really in love with it. 
It's a beautiful scent, especially wearing it for a walk outside on a sunny day. Interesting detail, every fragrance in this house is accompanied with haiku, a type of poetry, three lines, one emotion. I'm not gonna read you every single haiku, but this one I really like. I see the clouds go by indifferent to the tea picker's song. I think I get this feeling of being yourself, being hopeful, not minding the time passing. Really beautiful poetic scent. I would rate it 9 on 10, because it's beautiful perfume itself, but it also makes me very emotional. Next fragrance is called Cricket Song. Find it here. Okay, Cricket Song is all about magnolia. It's a clean white floral scent, a bit dry and powdery. Powdery in a way that it makes me think of a bunch of fresh laundry, like a freshly washed bed sheets drying in the garden in summer. The only notes listed here are bergamot, vetiver and magnolia. I also catch some jasmine and musk here and being honest, I'm not a big fan of it. It feels too feminine and floral and simply doesn't surprise me. It doesn't cause much emotion in me. It smells a bit too safe, a bit designer-like, white floral. But it's very opulent, very elegant, quite loud and confident. It's a pretty good one, even though it's not my scent profile, so I would rate it maybe 7 on 10. Very classic. Next fragrance is called Just a Rose, and it's not included in the Discovery set, but I love rose fragrances, so I wanted to try Just a Rose. It's a very nice citrusy rose scent. I really like things like that. It's like a fresh cut, little roses with the hints of tea. So lovely, youthful, very gentle. The notes here are rose, bergamot, gayak wood, grapefruit, peony, matte and tonka bean. Such a beautiful composition. If I can draw you a scene, imagine a white cotton tablecloth with a porcelain cup of green tea and a bouquet of fresh garden roses in a glass. It's very transparent fragrance, painted in watercolors. Unfortunately, not very long-lasting, just like the tea time moment that I just illustrated for you. Yes, I absolutely love it. It's simple, but it creates a small emotion. It captures the moment of tea time with the roses on the table very pleasant. I will rate it 8.5 on 10. It's nothing new, but a really, really good rose fragrance. And I love rose scents. The next fragrance is called This July Evening. not included in the discovery set, but after checking the notes I got really interested and I'm really glad I purchased the sample, because it's something unique. Look at the notes. Vanilla, jasmine, blue chamomile, bergamot, immortel, beeswax, anise, pink pepper, violet leaves, black currant, mimosa, rose. This fragrance is so complex, enveloping, creamy, really creamy. Vanilla is hidden somewhere below and it's pretty smooth and solid scent, but it really feels transparent. It's kind of hard to catch, it doesn't project a lot, but... Funny, but it almost doesn't feel like the perfume for me, but instead it feels like a hot summer air around me, like July evening. <laughs> there is some salty feel in it, some milky accords, I catch very dry herbal notes here, like a meadow flowers, yellowish hay dried in the heat of the sun. And it's all so airy, stunning fragrance. I'm so surprised. I don't hear many people talking about it, but it's a beautiful scent. It most perfectly combines the soft 
herbal notes with some milky accords and it feels like summer. I totally can picture this fragrance like a July evening, sunset spreading on the fields, summer in the countryside, cows, <laughs> warm air filled with aroma of meadow flowers and drying hay, summer heat, this sweetness and saltiness of the hot skin. It's such an atmospheric fragrance and I'm so lost in it. <laughs> it has a lot of similarity with Gucci fragrance, Memoir d'une odeur. Not exactly the notes, but the vibe, the atmosphere. I even passed by the store to test again the Gucci fragrance. There is some similarity. But I think I much prefer Floraiku creation because of its softness, quietness. I really don't click with uh, Memoir d'une odeur. I find it somehow sharp. I will rate this July evening 8 on 10 because it easily brings me into the summer night in the countryside. It's so pleasant, soft and wearable fragrance in general. So underrated, I think it deserves more love. And the last fragrance from floral collection I have is called Young at Heart. I receive it as a gift when I purchased a full-size bottle of the other perfume. <laughs> it's such a happy summer perfume. The notes here are watermelon, asmanthus, jasmine, bergamot, water lily, iris, musk. It smells like a juicy watermelon, definitely tons of asmanthus, soaked in lots of light musk. It's green, fresh, very cooling scent. It's not juvenile, but instead I can imagine it on any person, any age truly young at heart. In this fragrance, Osmanthus shows more floral rather than apricot facet, and frankly speaking, I prefer more apricoty Osmanthus fragrances. Overall, it's a juicy, happy scent. It's not my favorite, but I appreciate the joyful emotion in here. I would rate this fragrance 7 on 10. When and how I would wear this fragrance Mm, on a warm summer day in the afternoon to cheer up myself. Very juicy. Next come a few fragrances from Forbidden Incense collection. It is inspired by Kodo ceremony, the art of appreciating Japanese incense, a moment of sharing and playing. The first fragrance is called Sound of Ricochet, I don't click with this one, to be honest. <laughs> Notes mentioned here are sandalwood, vanilla, tonka bean, anise and patchouli. But what I got here is a sweet tobacco note, tonka bean, mm, some moist, humid earthy notes, a bit fruity maybe. Some are comparing it to Gonsoi from MFK. But no, um, I cannot agree. Maybe in the dry down, yes, there is something in common, but I really love Grand Soir and I'm really not a big fan of this fragrance. I can see that many people on YouTube love this scent, but um, I find something unpleasant in it. It's definitely not a blind buy. As for the grade, mm, Maybe 5 on 10? I wouldn't wear it probably, unless I have nothing else to wear. Next fragrance is called My Shadow on the Wall. <laughs> That's a different story. There are some powdery notes of violet leaf and mimosa, together with a sandalwood and spices, ginger, black pepper and a touch of sweetness from vanilla. Spicy notes balance main flowery accord of mimosa and violet leaf and make this perfume sound more put together, more sophisticated, more strict even. It's really beautiful, but it's not what I love on this stage of my fragrance journey. 
I have Mimosa and Cardamom from Jo Malone and I don't really use this fragrance. I guess Mimosa and Violet are not my best friends for a moment. In my rating I would place it at... Um, Seven on ten. It's a lovely, calm fragrance. Next comes the fragrance with the very long name. My love has the color of the night. From Forbidden Incense Collection, I find this one the most captivating. It feels very tickly in my nose, and I like it. It's powdery but not in a floral way, instead in a, in a way pepper would feel under your nose, dusty sort of. The notes here are simple, gayak wood, vetiver, patchouli, black pepper. I really enjoy smelling it. I'm not sure if I would want to smell like it myself though. When I was testing those fragrances for the first time, this one really stick to my mind and to my nose. Does it happen to you as well that you cannot stop smelling a fragrance, but you know that you're not gonna wear it ever? I don't know. Maybe I will. <laughs> it's really dark, smoky, woody, very spicy. It almost makes you want to sneeze. And it's absolutely captivating. Imagine a pounder for spices made of dark, oily wood and inside finely crushed black pepper. I will rate it 7 on 10. And I think I'm gonna try to wear it. Can it be good for autumn? We'll see. Okay, and the last fragrance from Forbidden Incense Collection is called Ayo. I also purchased it separately because I wanted to try this figgy fragrance. Hmm. Ayo is a fragrance built around the note of fig. There is tangerine, fig, myrrh, pink pepper, jasmine, violet, tonka bean, vetiver. It's very tempting to compare it to Philosicus from Diptyque. Can I? <laughs> There are more differences than similarities. While Philosicus is green but milky, fruity, fresh, Ayo is green thick but smoky, resinous. It's a good balanced fragrance, but not my cup of tea. I find it kind of sharp, and that's much I can say here. <laughs> I'm really not excited about this fragrance. I think I can rate it 6 on 10 and... And let's go forward, because there are more exciting scents coming. We are moving on to my favorite collection. It's called Secret Teas and Spices, and it's inspired by Ocha Ceremony, a tea ceremony. And as you probably guessed already, next perfumes will feature different tea accords. First fragrance is called The Moon and I. This fragrance is built of such interesting accords. Mate, matcha, cedarwood, bergamot and gayak. I definitely get a smoky, dark, herbal mate accord. It's not black tea, not green, but exactly mate. I really love smelling this scent. It's so tranquil. I imagine a steaming, strongly infused tea in a dark, like a lacquerware wooden cup holding it with both hands. Very realistic tea scent with some green incense touches in it. I'm not sure if it's very wearable, but maybe spraying it on your wrist in the evening just for yourself to calm your mind, slow down your thoughts. Perfume as a therapy. When I wore it on my skin, it felt rather smoky and a bit bitter but nevertheless very comforting. It's hard to put it in words, but it does have the ambience of the night. The ambience of the tea room lit by the moonlight. It's kind of dark fragrance. <laughs> I would rate it 8 on 10 because it's special. So addictive. Next fragrance is called One Umbrella for Two. 
Oh, this fragrance really surprised me. It's bright, sparkling, it's absolutely delicious. It smells like an open tart with black currant and very thin crust on the bottom, cooked by your grandma and served with a cup of tea in the afternoon. I've never met a fragrance like that, it's unique. The notes listed are black currant, genmaicha tea, cedarwood, white musk, cyclamen, puffed rice accord, tea accord. It sounds so appealing, <laughs> don't you think? You know, genmaicha is a green tea with a puffed rice. It tastes very particular, like a green tea with a bit of smokiness and sort of baked feel in it, like a roasted rice, like a cake. It's a delicious tea, it's one of my favorite type. It's my discovery among the teas in recent years. And so the fragrance, it's definitely sweet, very happy berry notes here. Tea Accord is in the heart of the fragrance with a slightly smoky, woody breath in it. I'm considering getting a full-size bottle of it later on because I want to leave moments with the scent, you know? Like when the scent is so special, so bright, that you want it to be an anchor for certain moments, occasions, it makes me feel different, more cheerful, more hopeful, optimistic. It's something that I lack very often. If I get a bottle eventually, I will probably save it for special days, special moments. I would rate this fragrance 9.5 on 10, because there is a slight synthetic feel in it, which doesn't disturb me at all, but it's there. Keep in mind that it's a very sweet fragrance, but it's one of a kind and so delicious. Oh, so good. I have something I rated 10 on 10. I'm coming home. A full-sized bottle, my first bottle for, from Floraiku and my love at first sniff. I will spray it on my skin. There was a space in my heart and in my collection for this fragrance. I knew immediately. It is um, a cup of jasmine tea with spices and half a spoon of honey. So delicious and very transparent, like a silk scarf, so fresh. Notes here are ginger, cardamom, white tea, bergamot, citrus, pink pepper, jasmine tea accord, cedarwood, kayak wood, musk, amber notes. It opens up very bright bergamot and ginger. Later on comes aromatic tea accord and in the base I feel the most beautiful jasmine and musk. It's so dreamy, lightweight scent. I have very hopeful feeling, a really calm state of mind when I'm wearing this scent. It's not very long lasting, but the format of the bottle allows me to always have this cup of tea with me and renew it whenever I want. But the scent itself, 10 on 10. There is nothing to add, nothing to remove. For what it is, a light tea fragrance, it's a 10 on 10 for me and absolutely wearable. Shivering lights far away tonight, I'm coming home. Very poetic, a masterpiece in my opinion. The fragrance come in a beautiful box. There is a 50 ml bottle with the very impressive cup. Every cup is unique and the brand updated their designs. This particular fragrance at the moment has a more vibrant, more bright design, but some customers are still able to receive the old versions. And I'm actually very happy that I received the old one because I much prefer this one. I think it resonates more with the poetic concept of this fragrance, with the name I'm coming home. On the side we have 10 ml miniature bottle, good for traveling. And the way this concept works, you remove the cup from the main bottle and insert the travel miniature inside and close it with the bigger cup. And the smaller cup with a flower on top is meant for the main bottle to stay at home, safe and covered.
Next I have a couple of fragrances from Shadowing collection. Shadowing is Floraico's concept of applying perfume. Light shadow sleeping on the roof and dark shadow between two trees. They are supposed to accompany any of Floraico fragrances. No mixing, just applying side by side. I guess on one side of your neck uh, or on, on your wrist you can apply main perfume and on the other side one of the shadows to either brighten the fragrance or deepen the fragrance. To be honest, I don't buy this concept. I wouldn't add anything to other Floraico fragrances because I love their simplicity in a good way and their transparency. But let's take a look at those creations. Sleeping on the roof. What I get from this one is uh, definitely a handful of lily of the valley with a few drops of citrus like a little sparkle from orange on a very light woody base. There is lily of the valley, orange blossom, amber mask, geranium and sandalwood. I would even say it's a solo lily of the valley. It doesn't transform. I would describe it as rather even, monotonous, clean sand. It's not heavy, not dense, but instead more like a transparent veil of the fragrance. Can be a good suggestion for someone looking for a mono lily of the valley perfume. Definitely unisex, but I won't be reaching for this one. I would rate it 6.5 out of 10. Dry down is lovely though, beautiful light sandalwoody floral cloud. The dark shadow is more interesting between two trees. This shadow opens up really beautifully with grapefruit and woody vetiver notes with something like a, a cut apple scent, really lovely. But a few moments later I start to smell cigarettes. I'm not a smoker, so every time I pass through a cigarette smoke on the street I'm thinking, shall I hold my breath? <laughs> But sometimes I realize that not all cigarette smell is that bad. <laughs> Some do smell kind of nice. So this scent over here is a nice cigarette smell. In the dry down it start to smell really pleasant like an apple marmalade. Let's see the notes. Grapefruit, mate absolu, vetiver oil, cardamom, ginger, grapefruit, red pepper essence. I think that can be so nice on the men especially. It has the same smoky vibe as My Love Has the Color of the Night, but this one is a bit more fruity, more appealing. I would rate it 7.5 on 10 and I think it's good on its own. No need to complement any other fragrance with it. So those were all 15 fragrances from Floraico that I have. Absolutely beautiful perfumes that captures the moment very poetic and really beautiful bottles, it's a house worth trying. And that's all for this video, bye!